Hello everyone, this is Robert with Roboflow and I'm here with our machine learning engineer, Jacob. And just recently a paper on Archive came out talking about YOLO X exceeding YOLO series in 2021. And we just wanted to share a few thoughts about it. So to kick this off, Jacob, uh, what were your takeaways from, from this paper? Yeah, so first of all, just really excited to be, you know, kind of on the cutting edge of YOLO research here and following along with like the most recent advancements. Um, this is just like a super exciting time in deep learning world, object detection world. And um, yeah, some of the key key takeaways of uh, YOLO X is uh, just, you know, kind of seeing that continued performance relative to inference latency continuing to rise. And then another another big thing about the network is, is they're starting to shift some of the areas of the YOLO network, which we'll we'll definitely get into. But as well as kind of considering some of these edge deployment conditions, which is something often that uh, you know machine learning researchers uh, don't necessarily think about as much. They're just thinking about how to optimize on whatever benchmark that they're they're after, but not so much thinking about what's going to happen to the practitioner when they actually get into the field to to deploy these things. Nice, yeah. And you know, one of the first things that come to my mind is how does this compare to YOLO v5? Yeah, certainly. So maybe if you've you know followed some of our content in the past or followed other things about uh, you know different YOLO networks, you've seen everything go from YOLO v1 to v2, v3 with PJ Reedy, and then that got passed off for YOLO v4 with Alexi AB and Darknet, um, and then you saw you know YOLO v5 come out where they translated everything. That was going on in Darknet, which is a C-based framework, over to PyTorch, which is a more friendly kind of Python-based framework. Um, and the biggest thing about YOLO v5 was that now we had a new YOLO network that was in PyTorch, and it was able to you, you're able to train it very fast. You know, maybe even like ten times as fast as uh, you're training things in Darknet. Now the performance was somewhat similar, but you know, practitioners have really kind of all started to focus on this yellow v5 framework as sort of like the best in class for real world object detection problems um and now you have this new network yellow x which came out um and it's also written in pytorch which is exciting um but the the big difference is you know this time they actually unlike uh scaled yellow v4 which was another one that came out after yellow v5 in pytorch it was still kind of written in the same training repository as the one that glenn had written uh, in the V5 repository, but now you have YOLO X, which is, like I said, new PyTorch uh, YOLO repo. Big differences are that uh, they they took uh, the uh, YOLO head and uh, rather than having it uh, coupled together, they decoupled it uh, for classification and regression loss. We can dive into that a little bit more. Um, and then the other thing that they did was they removed uh, the, this concept of anchor boxes, which uh, is something that uh, was uh, causing some of these networks not to generalize too well to uh, to, to other data sets. It's okay. Yeah, I, I did notice that, that there was a lot of significance around anchor-free and decoupled. Do you want to elaborate a little more on that? Yeah, sure. So I guess I'll start off with anchor-free. So in all of the yellow networks, they make box predictions based on a grid. So they'll actually take the image and draw a, a grid of different little small squares inside of it. And then from those small squares, they'll regress off of the square to predict like kind of the offset, if you will, from how far off from that box um, they should predict the, the predicted box. And so when you make this prediction, you actually have like some tens of thousands of possible boxes that you could sift through as the possible detections. Um, now, one weird thing about the previous YOLO networks is they had this concept of anchor boxes on top of the grid. So an anchor box would be like, maybe instead of having a box that's shaped this way, we should have it maybe more like skinny up and down. So for example, like um, in YOLO v5, uh, the YOLO v5 repo automatically learns these anchor boxes. So if you have a data set uh, that like say you have one data set with stingrays and one with giraffes, say, the one with giraffes, you're probably gonna want anchor boxes that are more like tall and skinny 
right. the areas they're going to be wide and flat, not just sort of like a regular box. Um, but but Yellow X actually kind of took away that whole notion of anchor boxes, and they're just predicting uh, right off the grid, which is sort of an exciting thing in that it adapts better to different data sets theoretically. Now, this is something that we'll have to see in, in the real world field, because if you look at these papers, they always benchmark just on the COCO data set, um, which is obviously different than, than the, the problems you're going to interact with when you when you get out in the wild and start really applying the right. Um, nice, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, and then the other side of things we were talking about the um, uh, decoupling and coupling of the of the detection heads. So once once you get to a, like an individual box, there's various features from that box that, that are going to predict um, both the regression, so where the box should be, and then the class of where the what what class that that box is. Um, and you could have those features kind of in the same pipeline and then have them feed into uh, the, the same pipeline and then feed into the same prediction pipeline. Or you could split them off and allow different features to start forming. And so the decoupling of the head, I guess, was an attempt to sort of split those features off um, and uh, make it so you could be predicting those things independently when you get to that step. Um, uh, obviously, we'll drop the link to the, the research paper for everybody to review more, and and uh, also we'll we'll drop a link to the repo if you if you want to look at uh, some of the modeling code too, in case I've in case I haven't perfectly characterized what they were doing there. Right. Yeah. And uh, are there any things, especially when it comes to content creation for RoboFlow, that you think maybe you'd want to experiment with and maybe provide a blog post for? Yeah, definitely. We're we're looking forward to you know digging in deeper to Yellow X. We're we're looking at it here as as should you. You know, whenever there's a new network, it's it's always good to try it out on your own data set so you can see how it performs. So certainly, I, I anticipate us uh, putting together some uh, training resources on how to train Yellow X on your own custom data. You know, as as usual with these repositories, they they provide ways to uh, follow their benchmarking directly, but um, adapting to a new data set. That's where the real, that's where the real magic happens. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to it and I'm sure uh, our fans are looking forward to it as well. Uh, thanks, Jacob. It's been really enlightening to hear some of your thoughts on this new research. Yeah. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. I guess one last thing I will encourage everybody to do is we'll drop the link to the repository below. Uh, start taking a look at it, see what you think. I think one of the most exciting things about this is this is an entirely new YOLO repository written in new PyTorch, new training routines. Um, you know, they really got on top of things and sort of fissured away uh, from these main repositories, which is something that's really exciting. You know, while the main spirit of YOLO has been continued in, in all these steps and all these different models, when you actually start from scratch and you really start to write things in a new way, um, this is going to be an exciting repository to watch, and I'm sure, um, you know, there'll be follow-up research that that, that uh, come out from uh, Megvi, uh, this the, this this company that that made this network, um, and we'll certainly be watching it here, and uh, hopefully you will be too. So, um, so yeah, so yeah. everybody, thanks for joining me and Robert today, and uh, if you like this content, always remember to like and subscribe, and we'll uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Yeah.